Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to another podcast with Amoda Ma. My name is Kavi, and I'm delighted to be here once again with Amoda. Today, it's Friday afternoon, and we decided to do a spontaneous uh, podcast around the uh, this important matter of the embodiment of non-duality. Um, let me first say hello to Amoda. Hello, Greetings, Kavi. Amoda. How are you? Um, very well, thank you. Good. We may have a couple of thunderstorms rolling in here in Santa Fe as it started to move towards monsoon season. So bear with us if there are any sound effects or the like. I'm sure they'll add some import to the conversation. Amoda, we're going to talk about the embodiment of non-duality. I seem to remember that you wrote a book and I've checked out and it was 2017 when there was a book called Embodied Enlightenment written by you um, that went into, you know, talking about the, not only the, I don't want to talk about experience, but the uh, experience of enlightenment and the very essence of what it means to embody that in the world today and i know that your teaching has our teaching really has revolved around this yes this this matter and um and obviously over the years in that book you talk you know you break break it down into sections into chapters that are all relevant from relationship to even to food to you know what it means to embody enlightenment or non-duality in those in those areas um, but 2017 is a long time ago now, and there's been a lot of teaching under the bridge. There's been a lot of maturation. You've, you know, you've done a lot. And I'd, I'd like to kind of know where you're at with it now. Where is, where is the em, 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 embodiment of non-duality now for you? And, you know, how, how to, what I'm looking for is a way in to open up this, this important conversation. So let's get this clear. Are you asking about my own experience or are you asking about the genre of spiritual inquiry, which has evolved to some degree since even 2017? Um, I, I, just... I'm, <clears throat> I'm, excuse me. I'm not looking for your own personal experience because I think you, you know, you wouldn't have been able to write that book, that extremely uh, clear book had you not viscerally been living the living of it even even then of course yeah so i wouldn't expect that expect that to change somehow so it's more to do with you know what it means for the contemporary seeker what does it mean still there are questions because still in our teachings still the questions come up well i've had a glimpse i've had an experience i keep yo-yoing between yeah the, the non-dual sort of awakened let's just call it an experience and where that fits into the the road of life with all of its challenges in relationship into the crazy world that we're living in because it is, it is extremely challenging. So it's more about the, where the genre is in some ways. But having said that, if your if your own experience is useful, then let's let, let, let's let's it. start with non-duality as. Uh, as an understanding you could say no i won't go so far as to say it's a philosophy but as an understanding that understanding can remain on an intellectual conceptual level because once you get it yeah and it may take a little bit of digging, probing, pointing, and so on. But once it's got, if you like, because it's it can be got <laughs> through a, a shift in perception, which is a kind of 
it, yeah, that shift in perception can can remain as that shift in the moment, but then nothing fundamentally changes in the human realm. There's no true transformation in it. It just remains as a perspective. So that's one level, if you like, of non-duality, mm. which more and more is becoming uh, accessible or available as an understanding because more and more there are more and more people talking about it, mm. more and more, uh, if you like, teachers or awakened individuals, uh, books, uh, teachings, videos about non-duality. And then there's the living of that understanding, which has a profound transformation on how we relate to life. So the embodiment of it <laughs> is about that deeper understanding. Uh, I don't call it an understanding at yes. that point, but a deeper uh, filtering in of that into the whole human experience. Now, it, it, I say this because, or partly because for me, it was never an understanding. Um, I hadn't even heard of the word non-duality. It wasn't a word that was part of the zeitgeist. So there was no non-dual understanding. Um, it arose, if you like, as an understanding from the lived experience of it. But because these days, I'm repeating the same thing really, but because it seems that certainly in the past however many years, um, five, six, seven, maybe more years, there's been an increasing uh, amount of information, conversation, and so on, and use of the word non-duality then it has this sort of uh, possibility of remaining just as a conceptual understanding. Now, that's not always the case, but it is sometimes the case. <laughs> yeah. So I guess we're here in this conversation trying to explore how does it filter into the lived experience? Yes. <clears throat> yeah. What I'm what I'm kind of hearing and actually what it's what it's reminding me of was our last um podcast that we did two weeks ago. We talked about heaven and hell, but also we started to talk about the bifurcation point. And what when you're talking as you are, I'm wondering, you know, why is 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 non-duality not staying in a sense in the let's call it just rarefied state of the perennial philosophy of non non yeah, non duality or even a fieta and and certainly from what we're seeing you know the, the 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 intensity of the world and the intensity of relationships and the intensity of the pervading politic and all of the yada yada is is kind of bringing the plus you know people are very i don't know they're they're much clearer in some ways these days this is not you know it's not a fluffy new age thing it's like you know the 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 demand or the need is for you know what's really going on here and how the hell can i can i live from this place how can I actually really live from this place? And what I'm saying is that there's an intensity around the field is building somehow to, 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 to bring the marriage of the two more intensely into focus. Good times. Yes. <laughs> in, in good times. The potential 
for awakening <laughs> is is here now, but that's when it's really got nothing to do with a non-dual understanding as a philosophical stance or or perspective. It's the very grit of suffering or freedom. It's almost life and life or death. <laughs> in, in some ways, life or death of the of the self that is identified with what it thinks it is. Isn't that <laughs> not too <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that, you know, why we're aiming this difficult conversation is is in in that sort of, yeah, in that messy arena. Well, it's sort of, one can approach it two ways, if you like, and I think it is approached in two ways, not consciously, but just because there are a myriad of different people at different stages of their own personal evolution, if you like, Um or path of self-knowledge, one can come to it from a sort of philosophical uh, point of view, uh, an interest, almost an intellectual interest initially, maybe a spiritual interest, but more on a philosophical uh, point of view. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the appeal of self-realization, it appeals to many different people at different levels, at different stages, for different reasons. So then it becomes more a, a philosophical, intellectual curiosity, um, which may take one down the path, if you like, towards real freedom, yeah, to to self realization. And then there's the other sort of side of the <laughs> the fence, if you like, or the, the continuum, mm -hmm. where there's no particular uh, spiritual path or, or intellectual pursuit or philosophical pursuit, but just the raw stuff of life where this intensity uh, reflected by the world is highlighting the ego-centric paradigm. And of course, the word ego is now very much in the field ever since the power of now i remember before the power of now i don't think many of us spoke about ego mm. it was really more in the you know psychologists may talk about it but the ordinary person didn't speak of that whereas now it, it, it seems like many people are speaking of you know i want to get out of my ego or blah 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 whatever find freedom from my ego <clears throat> and so on um <clears throat> So, so there's on that level, there's uh, the 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 ordinary life is reflecting for many people how there's this kind of grip, which we call the ego of being caught in thoughts, uh, uh, narratives, and how that creates an inner tension and so on. And so there's a yearning to find something more spacious or peaceful or something but it's not necessarily a spiritual path it may take them on a spiritual path of seeking uh, non-dual recognition realization but it's it's much more sort of on the the raw grit of life kind of level so you've got these two sort of extremes now both pointing to the same <laughs> both pointing to the same possibility, possibility of essentially freedom from the tight grip of identity. Does the, <clears throat> in your experience of teaching, not your personal experience, your experience of teaching, <clears throat> What is it? You know how we, how it, how on the on the on the on the philosophical level or on the mental level, let's say, yeah, um, is the is the understanding? Does that work f for some people in the lived experience? And what and, and and why wouldn't would it work for one person? 
and not worked for another person. I mean, it seems very nuanced. It seems very individually tailor-made for each incarnation. And I wonder what that's all about. Uh, in terms of the teaching, the teaching that's offered here, we don't start with a non-dual understanding. Why not? Because it remains as that usually, oh, um, because okay. the teaching isn't, uh, hmm. if it has a purpose, it's not intentional, but as it's arisen, hasn't really been about offering a non-dual philosophy. It's about listening to people. It's about listening to their struggles of suffering and pointing to that which is free, that which is already free, pointing to that over and over again. Pointing to freedom from suffering, but not landing in the pot of non-dual philosophy. It is ultimately non-duality, but in a much perhaps larger if that can, if that's the right phrase, container of exploration that doesn't limit it to we're going to explore what non-duality is and uh, what it means and how you can experience it or understand it or so on, because that appeals then to those who have an interest in that. For some reason, whatever that reason is, um, probably because of how it arose here, that's not the container that it's offered in. To me, the non-dual is ultimately freedom, which I think it is anyway, mm. <laughs> philosophical or not. But mm. it's it's the freedom of... not being identified with the phenomena that arise, the phenomena of thought, the phenomena of feeling, the phenomenon of this body, the phenomenon of this life, these experiences. It's not being identified by that. In that sense, it's non-dual because the self has been liberated from the identity of, of separation me as a separate entity. So it is a non-dual recognition, mm. um, but one that doesn't have to be in any way limited by calling it that, by naming it as that. Yes, yes, yes. Because the naming of it tends to create a mental picture that I think there's a tendency, somewhere. yeah, there's a tendency for that. And and that's not to say that that shouldn't be the case because everyone, each individual, yes, uh, that speaks of it from their own experience, from their own recognition and so on, will speak to it and through it in whatever way it revealed itself to them. For some people, it does come from their philosophical pursuit or following a certain spiritual path. Um uh, whether it's Advaita or uh, whatever else it might be. Um, therefore, that's integral to the way it's expressed. Mine hasn't come from that path. It's come from a sort of more um, existential exploration of the nature of suffering as a human being. And so it doesn't have any particular if you like terminology or or tradition to it. Is it is this kind of also why you 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 we're just putting on a course at the moment, the Tantra of life, which isn't about Tantra in, the, in in many ways in the traditional sense, but it's about this that you're talking about. It's about the living uh, uh, of of the non-dual uh, realization, in effect, in a, in a softening 
of the whole the the whole experience of being in life and so what i'm what i'm kind of hearing you say is that you've you've arrived at it in a different way completely as everybody does as each teacher does yes um, yeah yes i think the embodiment of non dual realization but in you know in, in in the in the in the immediacy of the experience of awakening I, I don't call it an experience but we don't know what else to call it because we have to kind of say it's something <laughs> um but in awakening there was uh, an experiential visceral direct experience of seemingly merging into life where there was no more me and there was no more life outside of me they're one to me that's non-duality that's the non-dual realization and from that perspective there's no deriving my identity from my experiences yeah it's like ex experiences are taking place in this open awareness life is taking place in this open awareness but these experiences that appear in this open awareness they're phenomena they come and go they're not permanent <laughs> so we start to see to the to the nature of reality so let me get let me just drill <clears throat> Go into I'm just drill. That's a terrible word. Go in. I'm not a dentist. Go into <laughs> the into the that that you've ju you you you've just said because you uh, have explained sort of holistically, for want of a better term, in a sense, whole body, whole emoda uh, is is awareness, is the open expanse of awareness, and within that, the life as it's lived is rising arising and falling in a sense the wave in the ocean kind of metaphor and, and, and but as you're speaking i hear you talking about it in a way that has a is it, is it a softness or a kindness or a tenderness or a yeah in in, in some kind of way so it's not a, a cold realization it's actually a warm realization it's not well there's no emoda here and there's only the arising of things and it doesn't touch me that's what i'm trying to come to is the embodiment we have to deal with life with all of its incessant wavingness touching us M one of the big issues that people have come along with is reactivity I un I understand, I get it, I feel it, I see it, I know it, and everything like that. And then I visit my parents and I'm reactive again and I've failed. And this is this is an issue about the embodiment. Yeah, so I hear you speaking to that. Is that is that right? Reactivity and intimacy with what is are not necessarily the same. Reactivity does arise from the unexamined self. So for non-dual realization, if you like, to penetrate all the way, it must yes. penetrate that reactivity as yes. well. Yes. Yes, yes, that's what I want to talk about. That's the embodiment. Yeah. <laughs> that's so, what I want to talk about. <laughs> in in the merging into the totality where even this emoda, this life called emoda's life, is seen to be a phenomenon that passes, that comes mm -hmm. uh, and goes. Yes, it's not permanent. It arises at birth and it ends at death. And in that, there's a great liberation from suffering. Mm -hmm because there's nobody here to suffer as such. But as you say, it's not a cold detachment. The cold detachment comes when there's still a self. <laughs> yeah, there's still a separation, a subject, an object. I've become a non-dual self, or I've become mm. an enlightened spiritual self, and life won't touch me. There's still a separation there, mm. Mm. energetically. What I'm speaking of is the end of all separation. So in that sense, we are fully penetrated by life, 
Yeah, that's why it's tantric. I'm fully penetrated as the open space. I'm fully penetrated by life. So it, it yeah, it's, there's no. What do you separation. mean by what do you mean by fully penetrated? It's a very volatile phrase in a sense. It's got a, it's very. There's no armoring uh, against it. So there's no armoring against. I'm it. not defended against life. It fully comes in. Right. Yeah, it fully comes in, but it doesn't get stuck anywhere. Yeah, wow, that's a, the, there's an entire uh, conversation to be had about that, isn't there? Perhaps. <laughs> well, no, there is because that is that that's a t ten million miles away from the habitual uh, experience of almost of self. Yes, every well, human one's, being. Of course, well, one's being trapped in the identity of self and the other one's freedom from self which is what we're talking about <laughs> awakening yeah <laughs> but just let's get back onto the point about reactivity mm -hmm. <laughs> from yeah so fully if you like what should we call it naked in in yes. in life it, it comes in there's no defense against it there's no armoring there's no detachment But from that place, there's not reactivity. Because reactivity comes from when we're defended against life. Consciously or unconsciously, most of it is unconscious. Of course, it's the past, it's the karma, where we've defended ourselves against being hurt. And then when we're triggered, it arises as reactivity or we defend our position which is our opinion our narrative our viewpoint which again is the habitual ego paradigm mm -hmm. but in awakening you wake up out of that it falls apart there's no position to take the whole ground of that imagined ego self me me and my thoughts and my ideas and my positions and my rightness or righteousness that comes undone from that place it's not reactive yes i hear that of yeah. course i know I, I know that i know the benchmark of of of, of reaching a, a a place of one's being that, that uh, where one becomes non-reactive, but I'm wondering, you know, in the in the in the embodied, you know, does 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 the spiritual seeker wait for that time, or does the spiritual seeker who wants to live in the world from a more authentic place, how do they use the experiences of the, let's say, the dance, you know, where there has been in in our in our meetings for instance people have and have reported you know having very deep let's say non dual realizations and then they still have to go back and the push and pull of the world because they've lived in the world in a triggered self identified body for 50 years doesn't hasn't just evaporated because of one realization so then they yeah they they then they have to deal with that you know is the world the catalyst for a deeper inquiry and what do they do about that well we always speak about meeting what is without an argument <laughs> meeting what is practicing if you like i hate that word practicing but because <laughs> mm -hmm. it's misleading but well, we have to say the, the 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 inner willingness to meet what is without argument, without fight, without offense, without defense. This is something that every human being has the capacity for, non-dual or not non-dual. It has nothing to do with philosophy. <laughs> it has nothing to do with with uh, even spirituality. It has to do with living from an authentic inner truth 
that isn't based on conditioning. It's about living as peace, if that's what we want, mm. if that's what we desire. And every human being has that capacity. Mm. So mm. one can have a very profound mm. spiritual breakthrough, if you like, where we might see that who I think I am doesn't actually exist other than in my thoughts, than in my ideas about myself. We might have a spiritual breakthrough where the whole structure or part of the structure of the self comes undone. And it feels like this openness. It feels like freedom. It feels like inner silence because it is. There are many spiritual insights, breakthroughs that we can have that, that sort of break open the shell of the, of the prison of self. I'll just refer back to my very, very first experience. I think it was my first experience long before I set out on a spiritual path, hmm. which was running. Oh, yeah. I had no idea. I just went running. Yeah, I was an academic stuck in my head. I was emotionally cut off. I was, yeah, had no access to my suffering, and yet I was suffering. And I went running. And after some time, yeah, after several months or however long it was, and I went on a well, very that, long that was run. A long, that was a long run. <laughs> <laughs> several months long run. I, I think it was more like a 12-mile run, yeah. I had an experience of transcendence. What did it mean? I had no idea what this was. A sense of transcending myself. A sense of oneness with, I don't know, it's hard to put into words, but just this sense that broke me free temporarily from this feeling of being just me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, I didn't know that. I was encapsulated in just me up until then, because that's all I knew. As most people, that's all they know. But in the breaking through, spontaneously, unexpectedly, I realized, well, I got a sense, a taste, that there's something more than just me. I don't know what it is. And that drew me towards that state. What is this transcendent state? We could have called it a mystical state, transcendent state, a moment of freedom or liberation, an expanded view, perspective, and so on. So we can have that spontaneously or through any, who knows, practice or being in nature. But that's not enough. <laughs> Yeah, is it? That's what you're saying. It's not enough because then I carried on my painful life for another 15 or 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so you could say that was a non dual experience. I didn't yes. know that then, but that's not enough. But it is a glimpse that may pique our curiosity somewhere in us well uh, yeah i mean in to to in, in you the you that i know you know that piqued your curi curiosity is not the right word either but it actually ignited a little bit more of flame you know within you yeah that has has probably been burning since you were born incarnated into this this experience I know you well, and you've got the same fire as me, the same fire that followed you or drove you or pulled you right from the essence, right from the get-go since arrival time, unbeknownst to, to you. So it only served to say, oh, but, but, but it, a mental understanding or a philosophy, let's call it, would never have been enough for you. 
And so yeah. in a way, that's why we attract people in the, in the, the work that we do, where they're, 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 a mental understanding is not enough for them either. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. As we're speaking here, I, I what comes to mind is actually sort of looking back at how it was in my experience or my life at the time. What's happened now, I, I don't know if this is the whole story, but part of the story is that there's so many wonderful, it's called teachers of non-duality or whatever. And it's very attractive in the sense that they exude wisdom, peace, inner authority, uh, perhaps eloquence, freedom, uh, probably myself included. I, d I don't know what people uh -huh. see. <laughs> but we're, we're exposed to that now. That's, that's what I'm reflecting on. In, oh, in, yeah. in, in, in the day that I'm talking about, which wasn't that long ago, but it's a good... <laughs> 40 years ago. 40 years, yes. Yeah, that is quite yeah. a long time talking ago. Talking eight, 80s, yeah. We're talking the 1980s and we're talking about the city of London. It's hardly the spiritual mecca of the world. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's I a good music scene. Yeah. yeah, yeah. there was a good scene, yes. A cultural scene and fashion. Yes, culture, music, culture. All that culture, yeah. social, yeah. Um, I wasn't exposed to anybody who would be a, an example. I was going to say a sample, an example of this. There was no ordinary living human being that was an example of this, a living example in the ordinary world, world. not some image of a Ramana Maharshi or, uh, you know, the TM teacher whose name completely is out of my Maha, reach right Ma, now. Maharishi. Maharishi, of course. <laughs> um, none of that, no images of uh, spiritual teachers, gurus, enlightened ones. I'm talking about an ordinary living human being in the contemporary world. We can name a whole host of those now. Everybody, at least in this field has, or the field of self-inquiry or self-development or self-help has access to that. So, so this is... The I'm oh, sorry, go on. So no, what I'm yes. saying is we yeah. have nobody to say, ah, that's what I want to be like, even if it's not a conscious thought. You mean back in back then? Back then. Whereas yeah. now yeah. there is. Yes. And with that comes a whole host of problems because we try to emulate. We try to understand what their understanding is. Yeah. And so depending on how it's expressed, we want to kind of take that and make it mine and understand there's nothing wrong with that but there's also yeah something that stands in the way with that and that's where non-duality becomes a, a sort of a obstacle to the true realization of freedom which really has nothing to do with trying to be like anyone else you have the freedom. I want it. I want it. And of course, that's how we grow and that's how we learn. And there's a lot of a lot more personal evolution now, because if it's possible for you, then it's possible for me. And by listening to you and understanding and perhaps letting that just go in and basking in the field, because there is an amplified field and we mm. do talk about it. So it would be hypocritical of me to say it's <laughs> worthless because we also offer that. But we have to just be a little bit conscious of the fact that it's not always the way it looks. We can't be replicants. Yeah, we must find out for ourselves. And a true teacher will, will sort of point you back to that, which is why I think somewhere in our conversation we started off by saying that it's not we don't we don't start i don't start with a non-dual perspective mm. or understanding or philosophy because that sets up a picture we end up there if we're lucky mm. or you end up there not you but the participants the here yeah, end up there if they're lucky if you like we're pointing to that but we don't start there because we don't want to set anything up <laughs> we don't want to set up a picture of how it is. And yet there is 
a sort of picture of how it is. There's a fragrance of how it is, which is why people come. Otherwise, they wouldn't be attracted to anything. Yeah, we have to lead or point the way to the to the pool, to the watering hole. But in the end, we can't make anybody drink. They have to drink themselves. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> There's so much in what you said. I, I don't know where to <clears throat> where to kind of put 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 that put my uh, focus. I don't I don't really know. No, I don't know where we've meandered to now, but this is where we've ended up. Um. <laughs> Let's just hold on a second. Let, 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 let. because I see that you you know. <clears throat> I mean, the, the the environment, the bowl in which you swam in the eighties is 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 is, a, is almost a completely different world now from the bowl that people are swimming in, you know, in this in this decade now, mm. through social media, through the spread of non-duality et al into the West, the filtering in. You know, even though even what we're talking about, the talk of embodiment. I mean, you wouldn't if somebody said, "Well, are you embodying that experience to you in the 1980s?" You wouldn't have known what on earth that, that that was being talked about. So the whole language, the whole use of language, has changed. It's still as frustrating, probably, to the teacher as it as it as it is to the student. But the field is very very different, and within that, uh, there there are. There are, as you say, all sorts of, you know, uh, uh, adva advantages, if that's the right word, and disadvantages, because mm. the mind habitually fixates on an idea of something. And so the problem now, you know, is that the mind habituates, you know, to, to the idea of, of what a non-dual realization looks like, feels like. And then that sets up something that then subsequently is going to have to be undone if one wants to live from a truly authentic place. And I hear and I see and I witness and I take part in these uh, teachings of yours. And actually, you don't start from a from that place. You you sort of somehow all of that has to that gets un, unpacked. There's a lot of unpacking, <laughs> I think, in in your in your work. And and so so just to follow me, it's almost like the the. Let's talk about the word embodiment. Yeah, when I was listening to you, just use that word. Not that you were using it in this way, but the, it actually sounds like a thing. <clears throat> it actually almost sounds like, well, I've got a realization or something. Yeah, and now I'm going to embody it and embody it. It, it actually sounds like a sort of almost like another coat that I'm going to wear. I'm going to wear the coat of embodiment. But as you're talking, Amoda, I see what you said 10, 15 minutes ago is the dismantling of all ideas, of all defenses. Of this, you, you, you said you, the world penetrated, penetrates you. Well, it's not embodied. That's, that's, that's like open, that's un unembodied if you like without <laughs> being disembodied i don't mean disembodied <laughs> yes but you yes, see what i yes. mean one has to be yes. careful about these words yeah well yes this word embodiment is one that i'm, I'm <laughs> you don't really like it, i also I don't, don't really like because <laughs> <laughs> in fact there's not it's many good. words this, i do this, like <laughs> no, i know but this is good to have to um, <clears throat> unpack the word because embodiment, embodiment implies contained within the boundary of my body yeah. and the boundary of my body is the boundary of myself and the boundary of my identity my most basic identity and it's also to do with my senses and feelings and so on and <laughs> indeed when we speak or when I speak of the embodiment, again, I, I try not to, but when we do speak of it, the embodiment of enlightenment or the embodiment of uh, non-dual realization, it's not about limiting it to this identity. <laughs> Paradoxically, it's about, well, it is about, it's, 
the, the the realization and the life fully penetrating this individuated localized experience but not remaining in that individual localized experience flowing through it so filtering into all the aspects of the lived experience which includes this particular individuation with its history and its personality filtering into that yeah not being out there separate as some realization and then this carrying on unconsciously yeah it brings consciousness to this yes. it brings yes. clarity awareness presence to this in all areas of the human experience there's not one area that is mm. uh, that, that, that is tucked away tucked away that stands outside of that and i'm talking about sex and money and work and being in the marketplace all of that is included in this they're not too it's not like that is a separate thing to enlightenment or awakening or non-duality the whole thing comes in and if you like starts to purify or bring yes, consciousness yes. or yeah undo the defendedness where there is still defense or yeah, areas that haven't been revealed and opened and uh, dissolved in that, if you like, come undone in that. So that's what I mean by embodiment, but it doesn't remain as an embodied experience of non-duality where it's my experience and it remains in this body and there's still a self that is wearing the cloak of embodiment. It's a flowing in and flowing through embodied really pointing to it's the lived experience yes, whilst yes. i'm alive it's lived and if it's not lived then it hasn't been examined it hasn't been brought into the light and that's the kind of more tricky area or not i didn't find it tricky i i, I it was just natural and organic and of course it took some time yeah, some of it didn't take time at all. It was almost immediate, spontaneous. And then there were some little areas, eddies, where it took some time. The relationship with my mother, which had a long history and a heavy karma, that took time to come into the light and undo itself. Some other areas, but some of them came undone immediately. So that's the embodiment, yeah? I think if you know in for me that it was longer and more arduous and there was a lot more uh, heaviness and tightness in the armoring in the in the in the emotional body you know emotional but, nervous system yes yeah, the, but but for you it didn't come from a spontaneous no awakening it's almost it took you <laughs> the ongoing yeah. journey took you to the to the awakening out of that ego structure oh yeah with yeah. all its emotions and constrictions yeah. it, it brought you to that for me it was almost the other way around it, it sort of yeah i think took me some of that. the way and then there was <laughs> a, a spontaneous seemingly <laughs> spontaneous I, I don't yeah undoing very in the moment, quickly, suddenly, yeah? And then there was a ongoing purification in that. So we all come to it in our own way, on our own journey, yeah? Yes, I, I, that's very true. I was, I was pulled. I'm, I'm, it wouldn't have made any difference to me had I known what non-dual understanding was because there was, there was something much deeper for, for than that going on for me had nothing to do with what I understood or didn't understand. I was just being taken apart by what was going on until I was rendered naked in the same place as you, really. So <clears throat> I hear you saying, and this is a very important point to make, that uh, the 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 word or the idea of embodiment has nothing really to do with the body and has everything to do with the 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 light of realization 
uh, penetrating the darkness of the lived experience. I yes. like to wrap things up, That's don't I? That's a nice I like way to say, say it, yes. And so then the lived experience right. over, over time, yeah, the light is not time necessarily. The light is the realization in the nowness. Yes. But over time, that, That's you right. know, as we move through life, so that light is going to you know, shine shine itself on all the dark bits and the shadows and the scuttly little things that have lived in our darkness That's for a right. very long time. That's right. Yes. And I think that somehow that is the work that we do, that people are coming naturally to do this work, if you like, the embodiment work, whether they've had a non-dual realization, when they whether they've had a spiritual awakening, whether they, yeah, well, this, that, or the other, or they've got some calling to to that. They're coming to do the work, not that we're providing any methods or practices, no. but we're pointing them to that because there is a journey with that. Yes. Yeah. We're not pointing them to the ecstatic. Uh, peak experience or the non-dual experience because that can be if you like i was going to say produced yeah we used to produce it through our ecstatic dance <laughs> you can have an experience we could whirl we could do sufi whirling yes, for yes. an hour or two and you would have that experience we can trance dance and uh, breathe, breathe, conscious, connected breathing, and uh, we can rebirth. Uh, we could. Um, there are many experiences that we could, if you like, uh, use or utilize to provide or manufacture or at least open the doorway to that experience. And that's great. That's valuable. But that's not what we do. Mm. It's almost people come when they've had that glimpse. Mm whether it's through a psychedelic or through meditation mm. or just the gradual realization of it. And then there's this whole other sort of the veils that are still here. We, 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 we point to the veils coming undone. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And facilitate that yeah. through the inquiry, through the dialoguing and through mm. the actual lived field of being together mm. in that inquiry yes, yes, exactly. and in that truth and that's very valuable yeah. i think that's uh, you know that's absolutely right because sometimes i mean it is it can be an arduous path it can be a challenging uh, uh and painful journey for some and so they kind of kind of come along for the actually support just to be seen and say hi it, it, this is difficult or can I have some clarification around here and also to see that other people are it's it's the same it's the same we are at different stages of the same journey yeah and people get the support from that field to that field mm. that we have talked mm. about and we do talk about because it seems to be that that's you know that's a, it to, for today's seeker in a sense, that field is a very important and useful quality. Yes, in the field of truth, if you like, being able to listen to the truth to ourselves or each, each other in that field of unconditioned listening, then more can be revealed. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm. The untruths, the untruths are where we've abandoned ourselves, where we've, uh, uh, where unworthiness has taken hold of our identity and we're not enough. These are untruths, but mm. if they're not examined, we can't see them for that. We can't return to wholeness. So in the field, the possibility of re returning, well, you never left anyway, but it seems like a return or at least a revelation, a revealing of that innate wholeness becomes possible because that's truth. The truth is you are whole. The truth is, the truth is you never left home. But our ideas about ourselves, our thoughts about ourselves, our beliefs about ourselves and about each other and about the world seem to obscure that yes. innate wholeness. And we're just simply being in the field of truth what is true here what is more true than who you think you are what what's the lie that's been perpetuating itself and can we allow it in the field and in that allowing 
it can dissipate because there's something more whole, more complete, more enough here, always. It seems as though <clears throat> there's such a yearning and a, and, a, and, a, and a growing yearning to remember that truth, that, that fundamental, that we are whole, we were whole, we forgot, we, 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 we lost something, appear, we appear to lose something down the path, and then we come back and, it's, and kind of go, hold, we haven't, I haven't actually lost anything that was real. Mm. Well, that's that's what <clears throat> that's what the intensification of the world's um, Mara, <laughs> the Mara of the world, with its fear and its division and its opposition and so on, uh, is inviting us back to this remembrance, this knowing, because that solves everything. <laughs> yeah. And that, my friends, is the embodiment. That's right, isn't it? It's actually the embodiment of the light, of, of, of what can, what might or might not be called a non-dual realization. That's right. But to, to to call it the non-dual realization is actually to limit it in some ways mentally, because it's the light, the light of our essence, the light of our being, the mm. light of our consciousness, and the light of our love. Mm. Hooray! <laughs> beautiful thank you that was a spirited conversation mm -hmm. i enjoyed it very much thank you so much uh we'll leave it there Amoda. yeah yes i think that's good okay thank you so much everybody for listening and uh we hope to see you again soon uh for another conversation with Amoda ma uh, don't forget to subscribe whatever you're listening or watching this on and um take care Go and check out Amoda's website, any events if you want to join us. Um, we'll see you soon, and we look forward to being with you. Amoda, thank you. Thank Namaste. you. Namaste. Namaste.